biggest launch I've ever been involved in. We were uh, convinced we could do it better than everybody else. It's a great feeling when you see the first car crash. Just take a look at these vehicles. They are absolutely state-of-the-art. VE is a bigger job than even VT was, and VT was the biggest job we'd ever done at Holden Design. Hi, I'm Mark Scaife. And I'm Deborah Hutton. And for the next hour, we're going to take you inside the future of Holden. And Deb, it's going to be a wild ride. We've been given unprecedented access to secret areas within Holden to see just how the all-new Commodore was developed. This is a very big story, and the stakes are extremely high. Over a billion dollars has been spent to bring Australia the long-awaited new Commodore. Get it wrong, and Commodore loses its number one spot. It's held for over a decade. Get, Get it, it right. right and Holden could take this car overseas to international success. So, get ready for an Access All Areas look at the all-new Commodore. The Commodore VE blasted into the spotlight in Melbourne. The new car prowled down a catwalk-style runway in front of Australia's leading motoring scribes and didn't disappoint. It's a great styling job and um, that's such an important part of the success of any car is getting the styling right, getting people into the showrooms, uh, you know, based on the hook that the styling, the styling gives it. So I think they're off to a great start with it for sure. The fact that they're allowed to do it here in Australia says as much as the car itself about where Holden is in the whole GM world these days. Fantastic looking car. It's got a real, uh, it's got real hints of European styling to it, um, but you can look at it straight away and you can tell it's a Commodore. Your nameplate has a proud history in Australia and it all started in 1978 when the first Commodore, the VB, rolled off the line. Fourteen models and four generations later, Holden has delivered over 2.4 million Commodores to adoring fans in Australia and many places around the world. Billion Dollar Baby, cute name, but this car actually cost over a billion dollars, an Australian first, and took six years to develop. Well, you'd have to have some pretty good reasons and a bulletproof business plan to ask management for that kind of money. Our car, the best-selling car still, the Commodore, is nine years old. There's millions of them out there. We need a new car. We've got to have a car that can compete with anybody in the world. The reality is, we've got 50 brands that compete in this market here. It's crazy. It's a million vehicle market. It was here, in Holden's high security design department, where the first wish list for VE was developed. Back in 99, uh, what we, Mike Simcoe, who was the director of design at that time, uh, he developed what we call a bill of design. It had all the... the, the the product attributes that we're actually chasing. Design staff, I think, gave the engineers some challenges, that's for sure. But I'd have to say, when I first saw the car in the studio, I was um, fairly impressed with Mike's work. The main things we were looking at in 1998 going forward uh, were the, uh, the need for greater safety levels in the car. That was really the, the overriding one, I think, from a legislative point of view. Uh, and also from a, uh, a customer expectation point of view. It all starts with a sketch and essentially that sketch then becomes a, a, a living document for the rest of the organisation to actually use as a, as a guide in terms of where the car needs to go from a design perspective, from a styling perspective. Marketing is the voice of the customer, is responsible for getting that research and to make sure that we build that in from the very first design sketch to ensure that we really meet and most importantly exceed customers' expectations. The reality is we can't rely on just being the Aussie car anymore. 
We've got to have a car that can compete with anybody in the world. You know, 70 plus percent of the cars in this market are import. They come from everywhere around the world. So we've got to be as good or better than, than these imports. Thousands of two and three dimensional digital impressions examined every panel and plane, both inside and out. But management needed to see this car life size. And some simple Aussie ingenuity showed how the VE would be dramatically different from VT way back in 1999. In the end, a simple slideshow demonstrated bold new plans for VE. So the red car was a, was a fine example of, I guess, the creativity from my group. First of all, we moved the front wheels forward. We then moved the rear wheels rearward. We then showed lifting the belt line and the effect it, it had on the appearance of the car. And then we looked at the occupant package in relation to the overall size and mass of the car and the fact that they were the same. And finally we showed where the emerging proportions were heading with a final slide which looked at what we saw as a V proportion and then that we can then relate that to what was now the emerging sketch program. As chief designer, the focus is to harness the energies of our creative guys. There's no shortage of talent in our department. So we were putting up their hand pretty quickly telling me that I can design the next V Commodore. So from there we let the designers loose. We wind them up, let them go, express themselves. Because we had a new architecture this time and we knew we were getting a new architecture, we, we pushed, pushed the envelope even harder with what we wanted to deliver. When we launched the VT back in the late 90s, it was a huge success. Uh, and then that was followed up by the, the Coupe show car and then ultimately the Monaro production car. And there was other show cars in between, so all of a sudden, Holden Design had this reputation of putting out good design, not just here, but globally. While design was busy sketching, the engineers couldn't wait. Using this old VT Commodore, they cobbled together a basic version of the new suspension and steering setup to see how it would work. Essentially, this is the first VE. Ride and handling are part of what Holden does. And we felt that with the previous suspension, we'd gone as far as we could, and now we needed to make a big jump, an architectural change, a real, a real move forward. What a present. Don't often get one like that from design staff. Uh, they gave us something where they'd stretched the wheelbase, and they'd made the overhang on the front really short so that the engine was inside the wheelbase. Yay! You know, now we've got somewhere where we can put mass inside the wheelbase. We've got larger wheels on this car as well, and we're thinking handling, 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 fantastic. Everything we wanted, really. The first cars we drove at the Proving Ground were pretty rough. I think in driving it, people started to feel that we did have something special here, and this was going to, to work out to be a car that was a, you know, where we wanted it to be. It was going to be a superior driving experience. I think it showed the first glimmer of substantial hope for that. After the break, we see the clay model that gives Holden its first real look at the new car.